I was 21 years old when I first heard of Brian Chan. A young woman chasing the Stillwater scene, I often heard Brian's name mentioned throughout camps in British Columbia. Our camp was no exception, and we referred to Brian often. Our ongoing joke was, what would Brian do? But honestly, when we asked it, we weren't really joking at all. Brian is the man responsible for BC's famous interior trophy lakes. In the 1970s, he took over the role as fish biologist in BC's interior. There, he proceeded to breed, introduce, and market Blackwater, Panask, and Kamloops strains of rainbow trout to the world. He turned hundreds of nearly barren lakes into thriving fisheries packed with quality fish and anglers who are passionate about them. For many of us, it's hard to imagine BC without the works and teachings of Brian Chan. I eventually drifted away from my lakeside friends and soon after left the Stillwater scene altogether. I still trout fished, but traveled to New Zealand and South America to fish for them instead. Even in the Southern Hemisphere, I found myself regularly thinking about Brian's publications on entomology and fish behavior. How did he spook? Oh, he's a tank! So when I had the chance to podcast and fish with Brian this June, I jumped at the opportunity. I met with him at his home in Kamloops and sat down to get to know him better. We spoke at length about triploids, the midge fly life cycle, and how to fish chronomids, obviously. But Brian even added a couple more flies to the mix, the chaobras and the booby. What about glass worms? So glass worms are the larval stage of chaobras, the chaobras fly, which is a member of the family chronomidae. The booby is, uh, I believe, is, it, 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 it's a fly that elicits an aggressive response from a fish. You have no idea how much this means to me. Thank you. And I look forward to getting on on the water with you tomorrow. So Brian and I set out early the next morning. There wasn't a breath of wind and the water was glassy and transparent. The bottom of the lake was visible from shore to shore and we motored to the far bank, peering into the water along the way. Even at 7 o'clock in the morning, the chronomids were starting to hatch. With such calm conditions, we could see the trout as they cruised past us. We'd arranged to meet up with Matt Jennings of Fishing BC, Jordan Ulrich from Interior Fly Fishing Company, as well as Jordi LePage and Patrick Henry from Topo Films. They're the guys responsible for any of this footage that looks like it's professionally shot. Brian immediately dropped anchor and handed me a pre-rigged rod with a sinking line and one of the booby flies he'd referred to the night before. It took me by surprise. For years I'd heard of boobies being fished in English circles, and even though Brian warned me that this was a fly they'd started using in recent years in BC, I think there was a part of me that didn't actually believe him. The booby is, uh, I believe, is it's a fly that elicits an aggressive response from a fish. They just don't like that thing in their territory, and they eat it to get it out of their territory, out of their turf. And some fish respond violently to a booby. And other times, they'll just swim right on by and not even look at it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, like, in shock. Give me one sec to like, get my line <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> what is this madness? Are you fishing a booby, too? Yeah. I like to fish boobies, uh, particularly late in the fall on a clear lake with marl shoals and the fish are in there and feeding on shrimp and they get very tunnel visioned on shrimp but you can sight fish them it's it's as close as we're getting to bonefish as soon as i started to wrap my head around the excitement of sight fishing with flies that aren't meant to imitate anything in a triploid's natural environment the wind picked up and churned the water all around us larvae were wriggling to the surface splitting their shucks and preparing for takeoff Looking to match the hatch, I reached into the water and scooped up one of the squirming bugs. It had a size 8 light green body, so I found a similar fly and tied it on. Brian showed that he was human and occasionally broke the silence to express his mild frustration at the slow fishing, which made me feel way better because I was thinking the exact same thing. After about an hour, I finally hooked a fish. Brian netted it and quickly pumped its stomach. I'm going to give you the net. Yeah, I'm going to watch you work your magic here, Brian. He immediately found the problem. The chaobras fly. The larvae are free swimming 
and they're predaceous. They eat meat and they eat algae and that, but they'll also eat zooplankton. They're glass, that's, they're clear. That's what we call them, glass worms. And they rise and fall up and down in the water column um, because they're photosensitive. So they like to be down during the day, but at night they come up. And so when when trout, unfortunately, feed on the Chiabras larvae, it's very difficult to imitate them because they're clear. But the Chiabras larvae eventually pupates into a, a very dull green or brown pupa. I knew that. You know. Fishing was hard. We still did manage to hook the occasional trout, but they really made us work for it. In the slow moments of our day, I found myself wondering if Brian is proud of the ecosystems and communities he's brought to life, or if he really fully grasps the impact he's had on so many of us. Personally, my appreciation for Brian stems beyond the insects, fish, and science. He is an icon unfazed by the accolades and praise someone we can all learn from as anglers and members of the fishing community, and he will forever be someone I look up to both personally and professionally. So while I may have stepped back from the Stillwater game, I will forever be asking myself, what would Brian do, both on and off the water? Only Hawkins, only after you catch a fish. So oh. we've both caught a fish. Here, then, so Brian. We- Thank you. <laughs> this episode of Orange Hands is brought to you by Hawkins.